All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy once again with another World of Warcraft Gold Guide, but this one is not part of the BFA challenge that I've been doing. This one is actually, well, it is in a sense, but it's a different kind of guide. I'm actually going to be showing you the Pandarian Loop that I've uh, found through a friend that's also here making gold, being spirit beast. Uh, they're gold goblin in and of themselves, and they've shown me this um, loop, and a lot, I know a lot of people know about the rare spawns here already, but this one's kind of interesting, the fact that you can actually find all five rares pretty easily by making one leap around all of Pandaria. And there's also the War Scouts as well as the uh, Warbringers themselves, so you can get lots of gold there. Because the War Scouts drop these bags, and um, you can get a small bag or a large bag, and then the Warbringers drop two bags. So these bags themselves are what you're really looking for. You can get the mounts, of course, which a lot of people want to go after. But these... Um, bags have the trade items which obviously sell pretty well and uh that's where you make most of your money isn't it spirit beast yeah yeah so you can make a good bit of money selling these trade items because you can see that you get uh ghost iron ore or sometimes you get uh trillium as well which obviously sells well for all these uh uh alchemical enchants and the jewel crafting all and then blacksmithing engineering all that sort of stuff which you need trillium for so this is a pretty good way to get some uh do you want to go ahead and show us where some of the other spawns are because this guy is gone Okay, so this one is Kunlai, but mm -hmm. there's five other ones. So there's one in, uh, what, what is it called? Town Long Steps? I don't know the names. Yeah, Town Long Steps. Uh, there's none in the Valley of the Four Winds, but every other zone has one, I think. So basically, you just want to beeline between the spawn points and just see if they're spawned, and if they are, kill them. Yep. That's really it. That's all you do. Kill rares along the way. Besides that, all you're doing is flying. It's pretty easy farm because you're just almost AFKing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, especially if you have a beeline and you have a high altitude, so you're not going to run into any buildings or trees. Um, and then if you want to yeah. make some extra gold, uh, depending on how you want to do it, you can also stop down here and collect uh, uh, herbs as well as ores. But you're pretty much picking those up from bags. So I think, Spirit, you're just talking about the fact that you get enough of that from the bags themselves. You don't really need to stop and it almost keep, cuts down in your time. So you just want to cut back on uh, dropping down or what? Yeah, what I do basically is I just keep farming this until I get a full stack of 200 ghost iron ore, and I also get stacks of black trillium ore and white trillium ore, because one of each of those ores, the trilliums, are 46 gold. So think of a full stack of that. That's a lot. And you get a whole bunch from these bags that drop from the rares. That's so what you do is you just keep going, and you're you're going to end up with a whole bunch of stacks of these ores that are used for a lot of different things. They're going to sell really fast, too. Oh, there's two rares over here if you want to go grab these guys real quick. They're not part of the loop, but they're still here. Yeah, uh, Kane, it's worth to go, and if you see a star on your map where there's a rare, just go drop down and kill it because they can also have the bags. It doesn't matter if they're the war scouts or the war bringers. Just anything will work. So I'll kill these guys, and then we'll show you where the other ones are and continue with the video itself in just a moment. But, uh, yeah, so, like, these guys, they drop uh, no bags this time. Ooh, but I did get a treasure box. And um, I don't know if it was student or who it was I saw the other day that was doing something similar to this, but they weren't going on this loop. And I think this loop is one of the most interesting parts because you're not just sitting there farming at one location. You're not just sitting there with the uh, uh, one walker AFK uh, doing that sort of thing. You're actually getting out there and getting busy with it, which is fun. That's what World of Warcraft is about, is being active in-game instead of just sitting away. And you... Another interesting thing to point out is the Warbringers can drop three different mounts. So while you're farming for gold, you're also getting a chance of getting the mounts if you don't have them already. I think there's three different color variants, and they can drop from any of them. So each time you kill one, you have a chance of getting a mount as well. And uh, as you guys uh, just saw there, I did pick up a toy as well, so you can get some toys um, and sometimes some greens or grays or blues even. So you can get some items as well while you're doing this, which is pretty cool. Um, some of the transmog might be able to sell, who knows. But the, the trade materials is definitely what I thought was really interesting. That's probably, probably key to this one for me at least, because as I told you guys in one of the previous videos, trade materials is what I'm shooting for to make this feasible. Um, in, uh, as Spirit was saying earlier, a stack of ores or uh, might be about 46 gold or 46 gold a piece. Pardon me, there, 46 gold a piece. If you get a stack of 200, that's 8,000 gold per that stack of 200. So that's easy money once again um, as you're going around trying to get these guys. There's another rare over here, but we'll skip that guy for right now. 
I'm just going to show you the locations real quick. And uh, you can, um, is there a website you can find the location of these guys again? Uh, I found the image on Google. Okay. Honestly, I just memorized it by this point because it's not too difficult. Once you make a few loops, you're going to remember where to go. Awesome. Okay, cool, cool. And there's little competition. A lot of times there's going to be maybe one other person, but they get bored after a while. They're going to wait at one spawn point and they're going to get tired and leave. And you're going to be going around every few minutes. So it's really not too much competition. You're not going to be held down by other people killing the, killing the rares because they respawn so quickly too. That's the thing is the war scouts. I've seen... Sometimes on the routes, there's two war scouts walking, two of them at the same time. And I don't know how that works, but it happens. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, uh, and a lot, another thing is that a lot of people aren't over here in Pandaria anymore because some people love Pandaria, most of us do hate it. So most of us aren't going to be here anymore. We're going to be either doing current Legion content or farming other items to stock up for BFA or even sell for BFA, pets, uh, depleted uh, weaponry, all sort of stuff. And that's uh, one farm that I'll probably be doing later on this evening is the depleted uh, uh, weapons. And that one, once again, I think I talked about it beforehand, but just in case I did not, that is over in Outlands. That's over in uh, Bashir's, ba Bashir Landing in Blades Edge Mountain, so that's right up there. Uh, I got one earlier today when I charged up the dagger. That one was actually worth about 65000 over on the main server being Born Tundra. So you guys can probably imagine that probably selling for about the same amount all here on Moonguard. It might be a little bit cheaper because it's a mead pop over um, the Born Tundra is a low pop. So maybe about 45000 35000 but still 35000 for one item is pretty dang good. Another thing is to make sure you have the fastest flying speed you can get because a lot of this farm is just flying in between the points. So to really maximize what you're getting, you should make sure you have the highest flight speed. And unfortunately, I'm not going to be doing that on this guy because it's a travel tune. But uh, on your main servers, ladies and gents, the ones that you're actually going on, uh, if you're not working with a travel tune, then get that higher amount. Or if you want to have, if you have some expendable gold and you want to go ahead and spend it on flying, um, go ahead and do so too. So where's this guy? Yeah, okay, right over here. Yeah, and if you forget where they are, the way I remembered it is a lot of times there's going to be a pterodactyl flying behind where they spawn. So that's how I remembered. If they're not there, usually there's going to be a pterodactyl. Sometimes there's not, but that's a way to remember where they spawn. And that guy's usually right back down there. Yep. All right, so we got... We showed you where that one is and can like somewhat right across the edge here. There's one over in Tower Long Steps, over down toward the bottom, uh, past um, Sylvan Trees, or the Sylvan Tree. And then there's one down here over by uh, the Tiny Brick Muck, or Bruni Muck, uh, Android Wastes. So right down there. And the next one we're going to is in Crescent Wilds. And that one's right near the Temple of the Red Crane, right? Correct. Okay. So what you're looking for, you want the small bags as well, but you really want the big bags because the big bags can have uh, these gems that are used in crafting the jewel crafting panthers, and each one goes for, oh, I don't know, maybe 300 gold. So those are really what you're looking for when you open those big bags. You're going to be selling those gems really fast. And that's the thing, is these materials are going to sell really fast, but the one downside about this farm is that because they're rare spawns, it's really a hit or miss. You don't know if they're going to be there or not. Uh, you're going to be able to sell the materials, of course, but you just, every hour might be completely different from the one you did before. It, there's really no telling. It's just all random. Well, I mean, the RNG is a factor in almost every high-level gold farm, and I feel like this one might be along along the, that same track because you're hunting rares. But if you're thinking about uh, trying to find uh, battle pets and such too, it's a similar fashion to where they may be there, they might not be there, and the drop chance might just never hit. Um, but yeah, so there's another one of these guys. This is what you're looking for to tell if they, uh, or to look for the location is one of the uh, Silent Strike uh, pterodactyl or para wings. Pardon me, terror rings. And the last one is going to be over in the Jade Forest, up in the north here, over near the uh, Sierra, Long, or Sierra La Village, right? Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And then, so how did you find this route? What brought you to uh, Pandaria? Well, I actually found out about it because I was trying to get the mounts. 
I was just farming them because. Do you want to drop uh, down and get this rare real quick? Yeah, I was trying to get the mounts because I wanted to start a collection, but I ended up just finding out the materials could sell really well, so I just kept doing it, even though I have most of the mounts. That's awesome. Yeah, so here's one of the War Scouts we were talking about earlier, and you can see that they drop, um, sometimes they drop rep tokens as well, which is really nice if you're trying to get those reps up. And so we got a bag there. What else did we get? Got the bag, and we also got, yeah, a big bag. So we got a big bag from this guy. Um, what did we get? Did we get something good? We got a magnificent hide. Okay, that's 140 gold there, which is pretty nice. And we also got, we got two bags from that one. Well, that's a stolen bag, that's why, okay. Yeah. Another good thing is, if you want the rep, I have gotten to Exalted with all of these reputations in just a couple days. And I didn't have to do any of the dailies at all. So I got to buy the mounts from the reps for doing nothing, basically, just killing these rares. That's awesome. So yeah, you can, and uh, I don't know if they transfer, or I know you can transfer via mail to at least the ones in the same realm. I'm not sure if you can, can you send mail into a realm for these rep tokens or no? Yeah, you can. Okay, awesome. It's a Blizzard account bound. Fantastic. And I saw that there. I don't know why I didn't put two and two together, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday evening and I am brain dead ready for the weekend, as I'm sure most of us are. But, you know, that's okay. And also for other YouTubers like myself, if you wanted to, you could probably farm up a lot of these bags and do an opening video and see how much you get. I might do that in a later video on my main server on Boring Tundra, just to see how many bag or how much I get from all the bags in a while. And so another question for you, uh, Spirit. Uh, how much gold do you think you net per hour on this farm? If you just had to take a guess. Honestly, because it's so random, I couldn't tell you, but I do know that I don't spend a lot of time doing this farm. It's really just, I'll pop on when I want to and just make a few loops. And just those few loops that I do, I, I get a lot of ores that are worth a lot. So I couldn't tell you, but it is really up there. Almost per bag, you could tell there's maybe a thousand gold worth of gems usually. And you're gonna end up collecting a lot of bags just in a few minutes. If you're lucky with the rare spawns, of course. Okay, awesome, awesome. And one last question. Uh, why do you prefer that, you said you prefer this route just because it's really quick and it's easy to pop on and just fly around? Or what's the main reason you prefer, prefer this uh, farm over others? Yeah, it is easy because you can just fly around. But another thing is, it's I find it more fun than just uh, farming other places because it adds a level of excitement when you see there's a, a rare that spawned because you get uh, pretty excited when you realize you could probably get a mount as well. Uh, it's not as boring as just killing mobs just constantly because so, most of it, you're not killing stuff. You're only going to kill the rares. Mm -hmm. So when you see one, you're going to be pretty excited. I think it just makes it more fun than doing other material farms that can get pretty boring and repetitive. This way, it's not as repetitive. Even though you're doing a same loop, it's never going to be the same, really. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. And it, like once, it, so it's not fishing. It's not sitting there skinning. It's not sitting there going after battle pets. It's just going after these rares and you fly around. And there are five chances into, or five chances for just the Warbringers. And then you have the War Scouts as well. So theoretically, you have maybe 10 chances, if not even 15, because you have... Uh, are there two? You said there's two War Scouts usually per location, or th sometimes there's two. Sometimes there's two. Okay. Um, I'm not sure how their system works with spawning, but usually there's one. Sometimes there's two. It depends on how many people are currently farming. I think uh, at the times when there's more people online, of course, you're gonna have a harder time finding the rares. But mm -hmm. um, I usually do the farm late at night, so yeah. <laughs> I think that's why I find a lot of them in the middle of the night when I'm when I'm farming this. Um, oh, here's another rare we popped on to get this guy. It's probably a War Scout, maybe? No, it's Morgan Crafter. I will take him. Any rare has a, a chance of dropping the bags, so if you see any star on your map, of course, go ahead and kill it. Definitely, definitely. And so then we'll go back over to the Kunlai Summits. But yeah, so that's pretty much the route itself. You And also you saw there that I did get a blue item that's uh, 
that you can't sell. It's a buy on pickup, which I'm fine with because you get that appearance for yourself. And so you also get some appearances for yourself, get the mounts for yourself, you get their straight materials, you get some other greens, grays, maybe some blues, you get toys every once in a while, and you do get um, some gems, which uh, fall into the trades there. You get the, there's so much, ah, there's just so much to get from this route, and it's amazing because it is pretty quick here. I, I think maybe we've uh, been about it maybe five or six minutes, and we've already gone around the loop once. So if you spend about an hour, that's what, um, that's, hold on, let me do the math there. So that's 12 <coughs> routes you can make, or 12 loops you can make of that route within one hour, um, or even if you've gone a little bit slower with water breaks, bathroom breaks, you might be able to do 10 per hour. Um, so that's 50 chances you have to kill a rare or even, yeah, 50 chances if not more because you have these uh, war scouts once again as well. So that's pretty dang good for a farm. And you can get yeah. those trade materials as well, obviously. And it's pretty much AFK because I just watch Netflix while I'm doing it because you only fly around and maybe kill something between the spots. So it's really not too hard to do. It's really easy. And another thing to note is uh, there's a... 1 in 20 chance of the mount dropping each time you kill a Warbringer. Uh, there's three different colors. Uh, I think it depends on how it's spawned. Each spot can be any of the three colors. It's just random each time. So if you're doing this a lot, you're going to end up getting all the mounts pretty soon. I have almost all three. I only have the two of them, but I'm sure I'm going to get it pretty soon because I've killed so many of them. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So yeah, 1 in 20 chance. So if you do this for potentially two hours you'd at least get one mount almost uh one in 20 chance you get do it uh two hours that's 24 times yeah that's awesome all right well i think that's all we have for this video um i'm gonna go ahead and cut it off but i hope you guys are having a great day thank you for watching if you enjoyed the video like and comment why you all have or what your favorite farm is and why you think this one might be good might be bad comparatively to your favorite farm and uh, if you really enjoyed the video, go ahead and subscribe as well. This was once again yours truly with my new friend, Spirit Beast. And I hope you guys are having a great day. And I'll talk to you later in the next video. Bye. All right, guys. I just wanted to recap that video before I head off today and also do an opening video that was much promised. So just to recap the video I made with Spirit Beast. First of all, big shout out to Spirit Beast for showing me that farm. That was really cool um, because you do get those bags, once again, which do have trade materials. Um, and each bag does have a specific trade material to it, so you're not really going to get ores with cloth, but you might get cloth and more bolts of cloth, or leather and uh, hides, or ore and gems, or s stuff like that. So that's trade base, which is really cool in the concept as well. Um, so you can get those those items from the bags. You can also get rep tokens. You can get the mounts from the rares themselves. Get some greens, get some grays, get some toys. And there are about 15 chances for every five minutes. So 15 chances per turn around there because you get the five rares as well as the uh, two rares that go with um, each of those main rares. So the two war scouts with the war uh, bringers themselves. And then if you make 10 leaps per hour, that's 150 chances. So that's pretty dang good. And it's really fun though because, uh, really fun too, pardon me, because you get to go around and fly around instead of just sitting there camping at that one rare, trying to get that one skin color for the mount. Uh, and so once again, you can get the, each of the mounts from each of those bosses. And um, I'm not really sure about how the spawning there works and all that sort of stuff, but you know what? It's a lot of changes, a lot of fun. Uh, so once again, thank you to Spirit Beast for that. Big shout out to you. And also, uh, just to recap that one last time, it is not just sitting there, which I really do appreciate because that, uh, that's one thing about farming that gets boring. You sit there and you fish up the same spot or you go over to a spot and you have the Windwalker uh, Black Ox statue down and then you have your Chi Orbits and you just sit there for 30 minutes looting every two and that's all you do. But this one, really fun. Thanks all around. Uh, so yeah, go ahead and open these guys for you. Um, yes. So... I got the Shadow Boots count, or Shadow Council Boots of the Whale. Cool, cool. Got a plan there. That's all right. Um, and also, I did sell my Battle Pets. I sold the set of 50 for, uh, or the set of three for 50,000. So I was pretty dang happy with that. i um, going to try to go back to the Savage Coast and farm up two more of those guys because I still have the one Dark Whelpling left. So, you know, that's, that's some good stuff. Uh, most of this stuff is like rings and such. I don't want rings. I want actual transmog. Um, yeah, okay. So let's go ahead. So they valued it about 8,000, but you know TSM is going to give me a lower price, so that's, we'll say, 15 gold. 
40 golds or 55 gold in total. Uh, 30 gold will round up for that one. So that is 85 gold, 100 or 210 gold, 260 gold, 380 gold, or or sorry, 430 gold, uh, 440 gold. Ooh, there we go. Okay, that's cool. Interesting. So 1,000 uh, and some odd gold. Yeah, so yeah, okay. So we're over 2,000 in total there, probably around that mark, 2,500 for the transmog from that set. Uh, and a little bit of silver, oh boy. Um, so go ahead and transfer that over. I'm gonna go ahead and keep this tune for some more opening videos. I might do another one um, next Friday, probably do one for each Friday, and yeah. Hope you guys are having a great day once again. Thank you all for sticking through that video. Kind of lost my train of thought there. But uh, hopefully that's useful for you all, and I hope you guys are having a great day. I will see you all in the next video. Once again, this was yours truly, signing off.